Hi everyone, after a COVID-19 lockdown which seemed to last forever, but in reality was about three months, we're finally allowed to get out and about a little bit in our local areas. Today I'm going to walk part of the Forth and Clyde Canal, which goes from the Forth River near Edinburgh to the River Clyde at Glasgow. Now the canal itself is 35 miles or 56 kilometres long, but I am not doing the full length, no way. I'm only doing about 8.7 miles or 14 kilometres today. I'm doing the Glasgow end, but it's going to be very picturesque, very scenic, and we're going to get on our way right now. The Forth and Clyde Canal was a success from the day it opened in 1790. It allowed a kind of a shortcut between the Edinburgh side of Scotland to the Glasgow side of Scotland. Instead of having to go all the way around Scotland, along the Atlantic coast, around the top and down the North Sea. Um, the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean are not known for their mirror-like qualities. And even in summer it can be a bit treacherous sailing around there. So it was a big success. Unfortunately, ships started getting larger and it was becoming more and more difficult to accommodate them on the, uh, the canal and eventually it fell into disrepair and it was reopened in, I think, 2000 as a Millennium Project. And now you can walk the full length, if you wish, from the Glasgow end to the Edinburgh end. We're not doing that today, fortunately. I'm just showing you some of the highlights at the Glasgow end. We started this epic walk down at Bowling, which was at lock number 40, and all of the locks on this uh, canal are actually numbered. This is number 37. We've got a long way to go, but I think I get off around about lock number 23. I'll know once I get there. Oh, and by the way, when we get to the end of this walk, there is something seriously cool I want to look at. It's something I've wanted to look at for years. I'm finally going to be able to see it today, and I'm taking you guys along with me as well. I came prepared, I came with some bread. We're now approaching what could be described as the least picturesque part of the canal, with all due respect to the fine people of Clyde Bank. The town was hit pretty hard during the Second World War, and most architecture is, I don't know, you could probably call it post-war modern. There's not a lot of charm about Clyde Bank, but we'll be through it in a few minutes. According to my calculations, locks number 33, 34 and 35 will be coming in about half a mile.
Not long to go now. And this is what I wanted to see, the aqueduct. You don't see one of these every day, do you? Right, here are some factoids I've got on a bit of paper. Uh, when it was opened in 1790, it was Britain's largest aqueduct, 445 feet or 136 meters long, four arches with um, 62 feet or 19 meters above the river below. Let's go and have a closer look. Built 230 years ago and still looking good. Right, I'm going to head down to the river because I want to have a look up at the arches. Could you imagine someone trying to build that today? It just wouldn't happen. Right, there's one more thing I want to do before I wrap this video up. Okay guys, this ends this epic adventure. These are the Maryhill Locks. There's five of them, and each one has its own circular basin. This is a place to be if you're into canals, into locks, or even into aqueducts. It's a good place. Anyway, during the three months of lockdown, I was able to do some really serious planning and thinking, and have I got some good trips for you. Uh, I'll start filming these in about four weeks time, once lockdown is fully over. But in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe because I wouldn't want you to miss out on these. Some of these are really quite interesting. I'll see you next time.